What's going on guys? So we are at R2 Automotive, as you can see in the background. Um, Matt's getting the back box replaced with two hands on his TVR. Um, we'll see a little bit of uh, footage of it getting replaced and um, like maybe some bit of revving in the garage and stuff like that. And then we'll go out and we'll do a bit of more of a car review like we've done before and uh, hopefully we'll see some flames. Right, so, we're going to have a quick walk around. Yep. Um, as I say, just a bit of a casual kind of show us what's a guanin. What's a guanin thing. Um, uh, yeah, but as I say, um, Matt's getting his exhaust done anyway, so we'll yeah. see what's going on around that. And then there's, some, there's another car in there. And there's another car that I want to particularly look at on the ramp, which I purposely haven't mentioned anything about yet. Yeah. Um, but we'll look at that when we go past. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. All right. <laughs> So is this, is this, that's just in for alignment, is it? Yes. Yeah, on the laser uh, four-wheel hunter alignment system that we've got here, that's really yeah. nice bit here, it's very, very accurate. Cool. Yeah. So what's going on with this one? So, this is a Toyota Sneaker that we've had for, what, maybe, I think it's coming up to two years now? Yeah. Something like that. Um, it's just like, been for a complete like, uh, restoration. Yeah, well, complete restoration. So you've had it for two years? Yeah, we've had it for two oh. years. It's um, one of uh, Richard's friends as well. Oh, fair enough. Basically, this whole one side has been stripped down, drivetrain has been taken out, we've undersealed it, um, obviously reinstalled the drivetrain, new springs, new shocks. Um, this gearbox is out of a Supra um, that we've then had a new belt housing to fit the original. Uh, yeah, because you, you can see the adapter. Yeah, you can see the adapter here. Um, yeah, and you can see all the black on the other side here. That's what we have to sell. Yeah. Because um, that's what you had to do to your GTR. That is exactly what I had to do to my GTR. We can do that on this shop here. Most of the undersealed treatment that we do will be on this ramp. We've got a lot of space you can see to just work and spray. And we've still then got the four poster for the alignment system. We've got the TVR wind up to uh, the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty much it. 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 Yeah, Make sure you shout so I can hear what you're saying. Sorry. So, as I said, Okay, this is the TVRs at the moment. This is where most of the uh, most of the cars we get in uh, go and get put onto because it's the most accessible lift. Um, as you can see, we're a nice channel right through the middle. So when it comes to doing servicing or even polybushing cars, like we've had a, a few uh, cars move for polybushing recently, um, this is a perfect setup because we can just sit the car on the blocks on its frame. Take all the wheels off, take all the arms off, take all the uh, suspension components out, rip them apart, put all the uh, bushes in, and then put the car back together. Uh, yeah, it's just a really nice, easy, clean environment. Yeah. Alright, cool. Yeah. Also makes doing exhaust really easy as well. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he's only been he's only been working on it about 20 minutes, and yeah, the new no, one's going on already. Yeah. And it feels really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Bill is uh, one of our. We've got Ray up there as one of our more experienced guys. He comes down on the weekends. Yep. Uh, and in the office we have Kane, who's again one of our junior techs, and then Rich in the back corner is our master tech, and Johnny, our uh, photographer. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll head upstairs and show you where all the fucking stuff happens. So you'll excuse the parts up here. It's really cool. most, of the, most of the parts that we have minor mass are just spare tires. Some engine components, uh, brake discs, pads, 
Testing one. Just sat in here for an F20. I have an S2000. This is for a customer's car we're working on at the moment. Just waiting to hear back from Toyota Japan for the pistons and cams on that. Um, again, more Honda parts. I know it looks like we do a lot of Honda stuff. We like our Hondas here, but really we work on absolutely anything and everything. I mean, by Skyline, got BMW. Um, we have a couple of clients coming with uh, M3s and M4s. They come back quite regularly for work. Um, yeah, that's the exhaust off of my FD2. Just hiding away in there. What the one that was on it before you changed it back to the spin? Yeah, it's the factory one. Uh, yeah. It's the factory one. Yeah. 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 Not enough noise for my liking. Not so enough. Put the spoon. Why is there on. so much box? We <laughs> need <laughs> less box for that one. Um, carbon fiber bonnet for an S2000. I was just about to say, I recognise this straight from this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was for I believe that is uh, Russell bonnet. That might be wrong. Uh, this is the machining area. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do here. Uh, we have an ultra uh, sonic uh, bath net for cleaning uh, engine components, gearbox components. Oh, that's cool. So we can do clean engine teardowns, clean them, put them back together in the same gearboxes. Um, workbench, at the moment we've got an R32 diff here. The uh, custom came in with the diff stating that there was a lot of whining coming from the differential. So Richard and Ray have been uh, trying to diagnose the issue. Uh, they've obviously sealed it back up why they're not working on it. But so, uh, when they go to take it apart, you know, the, the, these bolts are only uh, hand tight, so you can just pop it off. We've got the diagrams from Nissan Japan to uh, figure out what uh, the issue might be. Sorry, it didn't show it the first time, it didn't focus. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, we've got press, airline, sound blaster, and then various grinders and sanders, uh, arc welder. Uh, so we can actually start doing some little bits of fabrication, you know, making up our own mounts and stuff. Yeah. Um, things like that. That is the casing of an EP3 gearbox, I believe, that we have to spare. Um, and a box of very pretty Ray's CE28. Very, very nice. Headers. What for? So this was for the S2000, the black S2000 you've seen outside. Um, we're quite a big fan of our uh, of our jack wheels here. Uh, oh, you're quite a big fan of your jack cars. Um, I've got into my jack cars. <laughs> I, I still love my Fords, but just uh, sneak peek. Oh, they are pretty, aren't they? Yeah. So, as far as I'm aware, this is the only set in this sizing and bolt pattern in the world because Rays don't make custom. They won't which make one-off set of wheels. They'll. Um, the way that they like to do things is they'll do a batch order because it's easier for them because of the forging process. Um, and then after that, you can't get those wheels unless you get a big enough order in. So, you know, like four, five, six sets yeah, of wheels yeah, yeah, yeah. to make it cost effective for them. Um, so, yeah, this is the last set we've got, I think. Again, it's some of the best of my knowledge that we have in the world. Um, well, I hope your knowledge is the best. Well, I think my knowledge is okay. <laughs> Would be working here if my knowledge was bad. So, I don't know what this is. Yeah, I believe that is the head for the uh, S20. Oh, that's what we just did. Yes, so. Um, and then over here we've got another workbench, tear down gearboxes, uh, engines, that sort of thing. Before we take them into this room, the fancy room. Oh. So this is our engine building room. Um, as you can see, it's temperature controlled. We always keep it at a very nice, cool temperature so that you know, the materials don't uh, and the engine don't expand or contract when yeah. it comes together and cause issues when it comes to make, taking our measurements. Um, this is Russell's K20A for his DC5. Um, a really special project going on there. Not going to too many specifics, but the aim is the horsepower on a daily engine. So, yeah, NA, mind you. It's uh, yeah, it's fun in here. It's a lot of fun in here. Yeah, um, this is where Russell, or Russell, uh, Richard, rather, Richard and uh, Ray downstairs spend most of their time just sitting up here and working away. Um, yeah, the guys are the guys are magicians, honestly. Yeah. Sort of stuff. In here. So uh, yeah, they got you free stuff. <laughs> yeah, free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check up on Matt and see how he's getting on. Matt. Is it done yet? We've got one there, so it's beginning. Oh, that looks quite nice actually. Go on. All you need now is to get a lift so that you can clean that part as well. <laughs> <laughs> How are you finding it, Phil? Not too bad. Are you doing your fiesta? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, it's because there's so much plastic and unnecessary rubbish. It's like 45 clips <laughs> holding it. And that's coming from someone who owned one as well, so I can say that. <laughs> Be noisy, yob, beauty yob. Your electric loader. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah, it does. Oh, if I don't, I bought it. The geeky person gets his hands dirty. DS3 and that yeah. was a, it's a very different. You've got a very modern car that's incredibly capable, and you've got an older car that's not as capable but a little bit more fun. Mm. And it would be effortless to make the S3 quicker than that in every aspect. I mean, what? It's like a plug in of a laptop and the way you go. Yeah, more speed. <laughs> Just more, more, yeah. more. So, um, obviously, we know that the Skyline would decimate that in. In, in a straight line, but around a circuit, that would happen. Oh, easily. Oh, of course easily it would. That would have it around a circuit. Really? <laughs> on, in, in, in Mexico, uh, as I spent my last few nights driving that car around Mexico, um, it's going around Benz, it's just ridiculously good. It has grip to the point. I'm going to go look at the S3000. Bye, chaps. Yeah, it grips further. I mean, I'm doing 100 <clears> accelerating through Benz. I've been gagging to get out of there for a while so I can kind of look at this. Monster. <laughs> That's bad off number plate as well. <clears throat> There's a shitty Honda over there. Do you want the R2 number player in here? Oh, uh, no. Nah. <laughs> yes, we've already filmed it. Okay, so 
Pit height number one, the end of this car, it's probably going to be the turning circle. It has a turning circle of a world. It, yeah, it does. I mean, it just then. Like, I mean, the 8 point. But it is also the longest car ever. It is, but it's, it's just the turning circle is just the right there. It really is. Um, so that'd be my number one height. Number two height would probably be the fact that TBR saw fit to fit completely separate heating and cooling circuits. So, for example, the first day I got it and I bought it in Devon, it was a really hot day, and I've heard that these cars run hot. Um, but I had the aircon on full blast, but unbeknownst to me, I would see it camera with the two separate heating controls. I had that also on full blast as well. <laughs> so, so, the blast the heat yeah, so it, it was like Jesus wept, and it was. Uh, So there's that for number two. Yeah. Number three. Um, I don't know whether it's the height as such. Probably the fact it's got TBR's own engine. Yeah. 
Do you want to be uh, on the line? So, yes, it's going to be on the line. So, number one for me, boys. I absolutely just love the boys. I've seen the map that where I take it to Jules up in Chesterfield. He showed me the fuel map. It's actually TV. I didn't put a, a hard ignition limiter in. They just cut the fuel at about 8,250 RPM. I wouldn't take it that high. I wouldn't fancy the internals in that to be. But um, so, third like, so I love the way it looks. I love the, the, the interior. I love, I love the interior. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. In no, it's not. I do. As I say, I it's 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 definitely very quirky. Mm. It's quirky, but the, that's the thing. A lot of it works. This big cubby space here just works really well. The central vent, the steering wheel works. The dials all clustered round in the middle work. It's just all there. So I love the interior. Obviously, for this particular car, the colour scheme I like. Different. Some people when they make when they order their service, they're just like completely in black. So, that's a bit boring. Yeah, it's just tedious and boring. But yeah, the thing is, if I got, um, if I even if I got a new car, I'd probably still get pre blended because I, I really like the interior of its free. Yeah, yeah, same here, which yeah. is not dissimilar to this. That's actually, they actually call that Luna Silver. Right? But this is, this is Portland, Portland Grey and, and Purple. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, so I love, love the way it looks. Um, where it handles it's so direct, it's, it's almost like a go kart with the steering. It's, it's got only two turns lock to lock, which means that bang bang and it yeah, can yeah, go. Yeah. And I find it I find it actually bizarrely quite a notable difference when I drive a normal car. 
such as the white Burger General's car, or uh, a little Peugeot, it's sort of like I go to turn, it's like, come on, <laughs> trying to get around the corner. Um, what else? Do so you've got about, about, you've had, what, three or four? Yeah, I, I just, um, it's, what, what's your thoughts on the exterior? What, the way it looks? Yeah. I, again, I just, I really love it. That's not it. me saying there's anything wrong with it. No, I, I just, I, when, it, when it's clean, obviously today, apologies, viewers, it is not. Um, and I look at it on a, on a the gleaming, the gleaming guy. It just looks, it looks perfect. Why one now while well, you can still afford one? 